Hello and welcome to another bonus episode of Half Hour Mentor with me, Ian Cleverdon. This time, Scottish singer-songwriter Finlay Napier faces my quick-fire question round. If you've not yet listened to the full interview episode with him, do go and have a listen after you've played this one. It's not just inspirational to emerging songwriters and musicians, but contains lots of career advice that can apply to anyone, and it's also a hilarious listen into the bargain. As a reminder on how this works, I asked Finn these questions after we'd recorded the main interview, and he was not aware that I was going to ask them. I allowed him to think of an answer for each one for as long as he needed, but then, once he started speaking, there would be no editing. That initial silent thinking gap would be the only part edited out. And to be fair, even that wasn't really needed in this case. Let's have a listen. Question one. When you're songwriting, music first or lyrics first? Mostly lyrics first. Question two. What's your favourite way of triggering an idea for a new song? I like when I have a, like a concept, a story that I can build into a song. That's my, that is my favourite, where I've got the concept of, and I know what the punchline is. Like I've got the joke. I don't have anything else. I've just got like the, the setup and the punchline. That's my favourite. In your opinion, what is the greatest song ever written and why? Easy. Tonya's Twirls by Loudon Wainwright. Um, exactly what I said in the last answer. It, it has this fantastically humorous setup all about this uh, Tonya Harding and really, really great. And we're all laughing at her and we're punching down at her. And at the very end, he turns the whole thing around on its head and makes us look like complete fools and makes us realise that we're punching down and that we need to maybe think differently about things. It's a wonderful, wonderful song. And it's the twist in the last verse that's like, um, yeah, the first time I heard it, I was close to tears. It's so clever. And I think part of its genius is it is very funny. And then he turns around and he is, he is the master of that. Um, and I think it's a wonderful technique. I always aim to write that song. <laughs> <laughs> always good to have something to aim for. Yeah. Always. Great. You can appear on stage with only one artist ever again, living or dead. Who would it be and why? It's got to be Paul McCartney. It's got to be Paul McCartney. Why? Yeah. I just think he's great. I used to have the best of Paul McCartney when I was a kid. And I, we had it on a double cassette and we listened to it all the time. And then I watched that Abbey Road documentary recently. And he's just, I just think he's brilliant. Yeah, I think it would have to be him. I just love his musicality, all the different instruments he plays, the sound of his voice. He's just think he's got such a great singing voice. Um, but those songs, like, oh my God, you know, hundreds of incredible songs. But I just think he would be great to like. I just can imagine like him on the Hofner bass and the piano, and me playing acoustic guitar and singing. I think it would be great. Brilliant. Uh, you can invite three well-known people, living or dead, to your dinner party. Who would they be, and why? Oh my God, that's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Um, I feel like I feel like there are lots of wrong answers for this, <laughs> and you'll change your mind as soon as you've answered it. As so. soon as I've answered it, I know. And of course, all I'm thinking is I've, I've already said Paul McCartney, so better have him. Um, and I think I would like. Um, oh well, Mark Marin, who's uh, I listen to his podcast twice a week, every week, and I think he's great. I listen to him a lot. And I'm currently going through a bit of a Joni Mitchell phase, so I think I'll have Joni Mitchell as well, or Ricky Lee Jones if Joni can't make it. And I'm not, I'm not comparing them. It's just that I'm listening to both of those guys and Charlie Doerr a lot at the moment. <laughs> so, but I definitely, I've got to have Mark Manning because I'm a big comedy fan and I love his podcast. So there you go. That's five people, isn't it? <laughs> it is. 
Well, if you can't listen to Char- if you can't invite Charlie, you can listen to episode three of this series and uh, that's right. And yeah, to have a career retrospective. Final question: writing solo or collaboratively, which do you prefer? Oh, collaboration every time. Yeah, yeah, love it. It's it's always a good laugh. Um, I think I've only ever written with one person where it wasn't a good laugh, and it was like, "Ooh, this is pretty weird." <laughs> yeah. 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 I wasn't familiar with Loudon Wainwright's song Tonya's Twirls before the interview, but having listened to it since, I can not only see what Finn means about the quality of the story in it, but can also see that influence in several of Finn's songs, especially George, which he recorded with his band The Barroom Mountaineers. You can hear both of these songs and a selection of other songs I've chosen from his back catalogue in a Spotify playlist I've put together. The link to it can be found in the show notes, along with all related links to Finn's work via his website. Do sign up to his newsletter, though. It comes out monthly and is usually a laugh-out-loud read. Thanks again to Finn for sharing his career journey and invaluable advice with us. Well, that's it for now. Thanks very much for listening. And do please share the podcast series with anyone who you feel would enjoy or gain great developmental benefit from it. Do also let me know if there are any topics or mentors that you'd like to hear from in future via my email address in the show notes. So until next time, bye for now. Thank you.